Dysfunctional and chaotic. That's how a whistleblower has described the Foreign Office's handling of the evacuation of Afghanistan with the then Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab, accused of undermining rescue efforts and lacking leadership. The former Foreign Secretary, now Justice Secretary and Deputy Prime Minister Dominic Raab joins us now from Westminster. And you'll forgive me, Mr Raab, if I first talk to you just about that interview, because I'm broken by it, frankly. Um, and it was the interview with Arthur Labinjo Hughes's grandmother, um, who says that she thinks that people who are responsible for that crime, the crime of killing her grandson, should receive a whole life order. You are the Justice Secretary. I know that the Attorney General is reviewing the sentences. Um, what are the prospects for those sentences being changed? So, first of all, I thought Martin expressed it very well, as well as you, Suzanne. I mean, as a father, hearing the idea that a little boy would articulate to their father that he was a danger to them. I've got a six-year-old and a nine-year-old at home. is just piercingly heartbreaking. Uh, and my thoughts go to all of those uh, family and uh, friends that, that, that are mourning his loss. In relation to the sentence, the way the process works is if uh, it is considered unduly lenient, the Attorney General applies for reconsideration. She's taken that decision and I fully support it. And what would, what would potentially be... I mean, let's, let's set aside this case, but if someone has a, um, a life imprisonment... Sent uh, sorry, a life sentence with a minimum of 29 years in prison, and somebody else has a, 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 a sentence of 21 years, what are the potential extensions? Well, the, 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 I mean, first of all, uh, the proper process is to allow the courts to, to consider it again as Lord Chancellor. Um, I, I don't want to impinge on their independence, but if you ask me more generally, I want the maximum protections are the highest sentences to protect the most vulnerable. And last week, in relation to the case of Tony Hudgel, another heartbreaking case, uh, Tony came to see me in my office with Paula and Mark, his very brave adoptive parents. Um, I, I committed and we announced higher sentences for causing both death by serious... Uh, uh, causing death by um, uh, cruelty, but also causing serious injury by cruelty. So we'll do the maximum we can on the sentencing. Uh, and, of course, in, in a democracy, the, the judges will apply it to the case. But I think you can see the view of the government through the action the attorney's taken. Okay. Let me uh, change the subject now, uh, Deputy Prime Minister. We had a Conservative MP and chair of the Foreign Affairs Select Committee on earlier, Tom Tugendat, who said that it looks like the mistakes that were made at the Foreign Office would have left, led to a loss of life of people in Afghanistan. Only 5%, a whistleblower said, 5% of the 150,000 requests for help, including some people pleading for their children, were dealt with. You were at the helm. How do you answer to those charges? So, thank you, uh, Martin. First of all, 15,000 people were evacuated in two weeks, more than any evacuation in living memory, more than any other Western power in Afghanistan, with the exception of the United States. Uh, the pressures um, that were, uh, were undoubtedly there, um, I made sure that we had the crisis centre in London, which worked very closely and effectively with the Home Office officials and uh, the MOD officials, but also critically with those on the ground in Afghanistan, not just the military forces, but again, our Home Office, MOD and Foreign Office civil servants out there uh, to do the very best we could. I think that, frankly, uh, my sense is that the characterisation is a mischaracterisation. The general challenge we had, the operational challenge that we had, was twofold. One, we had a lot of people, as you can imagine, as a big rush for the, for the escape route when, as the Taliban took over, coming forward. And it was important to be able to verify in relation to a large number of undocumented claimants were they eligible to come to this country, either because they were nationals or because they were at risk? Um, we needed to check the basic facts around that. Uh, and also uh, um, to, to, to avoid anyone getting on the flights that would pose a risk to the UK. Um, One of the, the accusations the... is that uh, the officials were working from home. There was a work-from-home culture. They refused to do overtime. You personally are criticised. You were slow to take decisions. Uh, you took hours to answer emails. You did not fully understand the situation. Uh, it took hours for you to engage in any of the notes you were sent. When you did, you could not decide on individual cases and you asked for the information to be reformatted, which took up time. All of these things sound like we were not doing everything we could at maximum capacity. 
So I don't accept that, Susanna, but I'm happy to answer the challenge, which is, first of all, of course, as we uh, came out of uh, lockdown, we had the balance between uh, remote working and those in the office. But I made sure, and I talked to Nigel Casey, the director involved, that we had the resources that we need. In relation to the specific challenge to me that it took hours to make decisions, by the way, I'll just say, the challenge, the criticism, it took hours, not days, not weeks, but hours, well, of, of course, and, and that I asked for the facts to be presented in a clear way, well, of course, with the thousands upon thousands of claims being made, uh, in order to make them uh, both swiftly but also accurately, of course, we needed to have the, the, the facts set out very clearly. Um, but again, I point to the fact that in just two weeks we got 15,000 people out uh, and uh, we, we've never done anything like that in, in recent it. memory. You, you, you're saying in just two weeks, but we heard earlier from Tom Tugendhat and others that for months people were warning that this situation was coming. For months people were talking about getting the interpreters out. So why was it done in two weeks? Why was the not pre-planning? Why was the warning not listened to? So that you had better resources and you were more in place to do the huge filtering job that would be needed for all the applications? Oh, it was. So it, we started the process much earlier and indeed uh, a further 2,000 uh, came out between April and August. Um, uh, and indeed the interpreter, the Arab scheme, was set out well before. Of course, the Arab scheme was uh, set up by the MOD, working with the Home Office as well, um, and the, as well as the Foreign Office officials. Um, but of course, the, the real rush for the door came as the Taliban took over, which everyone, uh, everyone I've talked to internationally um, and indeed everyone across government uh, was caught by surprise at the pace of it. Um, so those plans were in place, but of course the rush to the door by Afghans themselves, the surge, took place in the summer. Eddie, you, you have an, an absolute right to defend what went, went on in there, but if the Foreign Affairs Committee report comes out and says that you are culpable for the sloth that led to effectively loss of life in Afghanistan, would you consider you had a moral responsibility to resign on the back of that? I know it's a hypothetical, but are you one of the type of ministers who says, I was in charge, it is my job, and if it went wrong on my watch, I should resign? Or would that well, be something all, you wouldn't consider? For, first of all, I take my uh, moral as well as my professional responsibility very Clear, uh, very seriously, and we'll learn the lessons from this. No one is saying that we haven't got lessons which, with the benefit of hindsight, we should um, learn. That's absolutely right. I I'm afraid I can't accept your assertion of sloth uh, when I know that a thousand Foreign Office officials uh, and, and myself Sorry, are working. Sorry, may, may, I, may I correct myself? I said if the report were to say there was sloth and you were responsible for what happened. In that circumstance, would you consider resigning? Is that the type of minister you are who takes responsibility, or would that be something you would see was a more broader cabinet responsibility for what went on? Oh, no, I take my responsibility very seriously, including for the success of getting 15,000 out, but also uh, embrace the opportunity to learn uh, the lessons for, for future um, situations that might be like that. Of course, this was unprecedented. What I cannot accept, whether it's hypothetical or otherwise, is that the 1,000 Foreign Office officials working um, in London, in the crisis centre, and indeed those working abroad, were, were, were lazy. Um, that, that is deeply irresponsible if, if for anyone that actually really understood the the pressures that they were working under, the facts on the ground, and the operational challenges that we faced, which were twofold, verifying a large number of people claiming and wanting to come to the UK and making sure we got the right ones and we didn't allow people in that were a threat to the country, and second of all, just getting people to the airport. Those were, given the conditions on the ground, those were the two most uh, difficult challenges we faced. And uh, again, um, I pay tribute to the Foreign Office staff, but also the MOD and the Home Office staff. They work very effectively together. We'll learn the lessons. But again, I point to the fact that we got 15,000 people out in just two weeks. The official says it's clear that some of those left behind have since been murdered by the Taliban. How do you feel about that? Well, look, if we'd have um, had longer, if we hadn't have seen the Taliban take over at the pace uh, that, that caught everyone by surprise, and I've spoken to interlocutors around the world, I've spoken to uh, Pakistani generals uh, as well as Western allies, everyone was caught by surprise. If we could have had longer, then, of course, that's what we wanted to do. Um, but uh, even after the evacuation, and one of the immediate priorities uh, that, that, that I was looking at was how could we continue to get people out, which we did, working with the 
Qataris, we've got more people out okay. at via Kabul working with third countries, uh, uh, regional right. uh, neighbouring countries to Afghanistan. We continue to do everything we could. But you've got to bear in mind, frankly, the operational conditions on the ground in Afghanistan, because that was the inherent nature of the challenge that we faced. And just finally, do you regret in hindsight that you didn't come back from holiday a little bit earlier? Well, I've answered this on this show before and said, of course, with the benefit of hindsight, the luxury of commentators, not politicians doing the job, but nonetheless, I wouldn't have gone on holiday in the first place. Thank you very much. We appreciate you answering the questions at a difficult time. It's, thank you thank for you. joining us.